Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to do rather a similar video to one I did a few years ago, uh, where I looked at favourite record covers. But uh, the difference here, slight difference here, is one it's, it, that was four years ago, and I've got a few more to show you, which I didn't include then. And secondly, I've combined it with album titles, stroke covers, combination-wise, title cover combination, because in some cases the title and the cover and the contents of the album are just so perfectly in sync, it's not even funny. This, this um, whole thing was suggested to me by this copy of Vanity Fair, an old copy of Vanity Fair from 2001 with this quite interesting picture of uh, David Bowie and Stevie Wonder, uh, Joni Mitchell and others. Um, this is what was called the music issue. And uh, hidden away in here was Beck Hansen choosing his top 50 album covers of all time. And um, at one point he chose Sticky Fingers as one of them and then he said, and that's my favorite record title as well. And I thought uh, that got me thinking, yeah, it is a pretty good title. So I dug out a few from my collection. There's quite a lot to get through, and I, so I'm not going to dwell on each because otherwise it would be a horrendously long video. But uh, they're quite varied, well, only in as much varied from within my collection. I haven't included anything that I don't own, obviously, so it's just a few examples of where I think the, the cover and uh, title are a good combo. Abra Arrival. It would have been interesting if this was their first album, but it wasn't. But it was the one where I think they arrived as international uh, stars, although Greatest Hits had come out the following year, which was particularly big in England. I think they hit the States with Dancing Queen from here. And it's just a really effective way to describe arrival. They're arriving in a helicopter and then looking a bit like a group of um, Martians having just landed. Here they are, in all their glory, ready to conquer the world. Well, they already had had several number one hit singles by this stage. So as I say, it's not really a, an arrival in that sense. Um, anyway, then we've got ACDC, a succession of brilliant album covers. Just summing up the power contained within the cover Courage. Can't get more evocative than that, really. If You Want Blood is another good cover. Highway to Hell with Angus wearing the horns. Very effective. And then Back in Black, you know, the lead singer, Bon Scott, had died. So instead of moping around and spending three years making a follow-up, they came up with a new album within a few months of Bon's death. Bon died in February 1980. This album came out in July, I believe. And they only, not only were quick to come up with a follow-up, they'd got a new lead singer and they came up with a superb title for the album, Back in Black. And uh, to top it all, the first track on side one was called Hell's Bells. So I'm sure Bon Scott would have had a chuckle had he heard that that was the case. Um, got a few Beatles ones, Sergeant Pepper needs no uh, further discussion, just a superb, timeless, iconic cover. Uh, quite inter interesting to contrast what would have been the Beatles' Get Back album, where they were supposed to get back to their roots, and then it ended up coming as let it, coming out as Let It Be. And whenever one views this type, this cover, one immediately gets a bit uh, sad and think and mourns the the breakup of the group because um, Let It Be was about the perfect title for the final Beatles album, really, and. Uh, so I've chosen that for that reason. Parallel Lines, just brilliant cover, brilliant picture. The title is obviously going well with the cover, although I don't really know what it means, but that's effective. A couple of Boney M covers to show you here. Take the Heat Off Me, got a saucy cover there. And then we've got Night Flight to Venus, which I always liked, with them climbing up the rope towards the spaceship to get um, to go to Venus. And then Oceans of Fantasy, uh, very evocative cover there, but the highlight of this album, in this particular version, is the 
the pull-up sleeve with the Oceans of Fantasy picture of them having this banquet. Pure 70s excess. It's Boney M. Not a big group in the US, so you may not have heard of them, but huge in Europe. Diamond Dogs from Bowie, 74. I'll just get this out of the sleeve to show you the gatefold. Um, just, I mean, Bowie came up with a lot of great covers, but uh, that's one of my favourites. This was the uh, the um, edited version because the original one had testicles on it. Uh, Low, I've chosen just I could have chosen any of the covers really. Just a superb picture on the cover and the, the album title Low. I guess quite quite um, effective description of what the album's about because it's quite he's quite in a he's quite in quite a dark mood. Uh, when spirits are not high, should we, should we put it that way? And tracks like "Always Crashing in the Same Car" and pleading tracks like "Be My Wife" and, and "Breaking Glass." Um, it's not too much happy stuff on here, so I think that was a really good, evocative album cover. Armed Forces from Elvis Costello. I, I find it quite. Interesting that armed forces normally refer to the military, but here you've got uh, elephants, which I guess in the world of nature are about the best equivalent of uh, a huge army of tanks. Uh, then we've got The Cure, album Faith, uh, which was a very dark album and not about faith or about questioning faith more than anything else. Uh, kind of a dig at religion and here we have this this murky picture of a grave, gravestone or a church or something. I think it's a gravestone. But and 17 seconds is another very evocative cover. This this man <laughs> standing on a beach, completely incongruous cover for the Cure's Greatest Hits collection. I just chose it because it's so incongruous, so wacky. Then we've got a few Dylan ones, Blood on the Tracks. Well, this wasn't named after a track on the album, but as a title. What a perfect description of the music contained within because it really is him bearing his soul about uh, the trouble he was going through with his uh, broken relationship. Um, then we've got Slow Train Coming, uh, which was all about his conversion to Christianity at the time and a uh, very evocative cover, as is the next one designed by Tony Wright, Saved, where, which actually got changed later on because people found it too over the top. But uh, I think it's very um, a true depiction of, what, of what's contained in the album, so I like that. Then we've got New World Record, just, you know, superb ELO logo with the London skyline, I think, it, or maybe it's, I'm not sure if it's London there, uh, but just a, just a great cover. The covers were quite often good, but that's the best one probably. Rumours, a good, timeless, simple, title for an album. The whole band were intertwined romantically and Nick Fleetwood and Stevie Nicks as seen here on the cover were actually having an affair at the time. So, uh, and we've got a couple of George albums, All Things Must Pass. Well, I said Let It Be was a perfect epitaph for the Beatles, but well, All Things Must Pass was probably a good good title for, the, for George's first solo album because he you know, he's mourning, well, not mourning, but he's moving on from the fact that Beatles have finished. Uh, and he's coming out the other, the other side, just in brilliant form. Uh, so a very, very apt title for that. And then we've got a couple here from Elton. Well, the title's not particularly innovative, greatest hits. But if ever there was an accurate description of an album, then this is the one because I think it's one of the earliest examples that I can remember of Greatest Hits package coming out and literally, you know on some Greatest Hits uh, or compilations some are the hits and some are misses but on this album virtually everyone is solid gold hit and uh, that's the reason I've chosen that and just an iconic cover and, and another iconic cover from Elton with Captain Fantastic and the Brian Derp Cowboy uh, very psychedelic and imaginative. And the Greatest Hits Volume 2 just came out two years, just two, three years after the first one. Uh, so that shows how prolific he was in that particular period of the 70s. I've chosen In Through the Outdoor from Led Zeppelin. 
and uh, just a brilliant title and a brilliant album design and there's six versions of this I have all six and managed to pick them up over the years delighted when I got the sixth one I can't remember which one I got first or last uh, but just just a very and hypnosis did that cover um, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed, we've been going in alphabetical order here for some reason. Um, so I thought, well, I'm not going to rank these. It can take too long. It's very subjective anyway. Then we've got the, the self-titled album from uh, John Lennon, Plastic Owner Band. No need for a title here because he's just, he's just bearing his soul and it is his personal statement after the Beatles. And Yoko came up with hers. It came out on the same day. And a uh, very nice companion piece artistically there. Uh, Mind Games I always thought was a good name for an album and with, with John, with Yoko as the mountain in the background, I thought that was very effective. Season of Glass, controversial cover with Lennon's bloodstained specs. But after Lennon's death, it was, it was not a happy period. It was a very depressing period. So Season of Glass about summed up for me. Uh, so very brave album cover that. Bob Marley, Uprising. Brilliant picture of him just rising to the morning sun. I always loved that one. Uh, of all Pink Floyd's covers, I think this is the best because it's got the pig, Battersea Power Station as the pig upside down. And brilliant title for the album, Animals, and, and Timeless, as I've said in my review. The songs are timeless because they're not specific, they're quite generic. Then we've got a couple of Stones ones, uh, Let It Bleed. Again, it is a pun on Let It Be because the Let It Be song had not been released at the time of this album, but it had been recorded uh, nearly a year before this came out. So it was a bit of a steal. But in true Stones fashion, they, they took, took something nice and made something uh, slightly evil out of it. So Let It Bleed is a pretty nasty title for an album. And we've got destruction on the back there, but you know, very, very effective. And then Sticky Fingers, well, I agree with them. Um, Beck Hansen, that uh, it is a brilliant title for an album and just what a brilliant idea to put the zip. Unfortunately, uh, later copies of the album or recent copies of the album didn't have the actual zip, presumably for cost reasons. I've chosen another Stones cover to To You, one of their best latter day covers, easily. Uh, status quo rocking all over the world. Just a great picture of just summing up what that song and what this album is about. It's a brilliant album. Uh, Super Tramp, a series of brilliant covers. I'll just show you three, Crown of the Century here. Very, I forget who designed these covers, but they're all, they're all brilliant. Crisis, What Crisis with the Man in the Deck Chair, signed by Roger, this one. Um, and then even in the quietest moments, they actually dragged a piano up the mountain in Colorado near uh, Caribou, waited for the snow to fall, came and pictured it. So that must have taken a while. Um, but that, that was that is very effective. 10cc, bloody tourists, uh, with the map screwed up on someone's face, presumably some tourist who asked the directions to somewhere. Uh, I think I've always found that a hilarious cover. Uh, I just picked this up the other day. I'm gonna do a separate review of this album because it's brilliant. Um, but just to say this, Title is a pun on nuclear days with the weatherman glowing with radiation and stuff. Separate review to come on that. Uh, Paul's band The Run, I've always found a brilliant title for an album, brilliant title for a song and brilliant cover with the, the criminals escaping. I've always thought Wildlife was a good uh, cover. No title on the front, just him in, in the middle of nature with a very stripped down album. Uh, Wings Over America, another, another hypnosis design with the jet, with the opening doors, very effective, back to the egg. Supposed to be back, meaning back to basics, back to the beginning of time kind of thing and uh, rediscovery of sorts, as it, as it turned out, was Wings' last, al Wings last album, but uh, a brave cover, I always liked that, Stevie Wonder, Hotter Than July, uh, always like this cover, it reminds you of summer. I can't remember if it was released in July or not, but it's uh, certainly one thinks of summer when one puts it on. And I was just looking at this, quite an effective 
compilation cover from Stevie, original music aquarium with the fish. Uh, and then finally, as the alphabet ends, I haven't got any uh, Horns Ebon to show you, but uh, I've got the Neil Young album on the beach um, with various bits of, bit of a car here. And uh, it's a bleak album, but a very effective cover. So that was quite a lot. Hope the, hope the video wasn't too long and uh, a bit of repetition versus my top 20 covers, but that was about four years ago. So thank you for watching. See you next time.